When I first made the decision to move to China, I was told that there were three things that you honestly just don't talk about. The three T's, as it were. These three T's are Taiwan, Tibet, and Tiananmen Square. So today, my dear viewers, we're going to Tiananmen Square. Well, to be completely honest, we're going to try and fail miserably to photograph Tiananmen Square. We do eventually get into the square, but first, let me take you on a journey of chaos and confusion. Put cookies and cream on my tuna. Oh no, what are these called? Yeah, we're going the wrong way. We begin our adventure by making the foolish decision of taking the subway into the heart of Beijing on a national holiday. Our first stop was to check out a place called Beijing Camera City. And oh my heavens, are they right. This place has hundreds of camera shops, selling everything a photo geek could ever want. I had to give my wallet to my girlfriend for fear of spending all of our rent money on a glitzy new gold-plated Leica or Mamiya. I felt like I had died and gone to film camera heaven. If you're looking for a new film camera, drop a comment below of what you're looking for, and I'll go find it for you. Eventually, I pulled myself away from the thousands of display cases to focus on our actual plan, getting to Tiananmen Square. After all the trains and bikes we took to get here, we were desperately hungry. But of course, I still had to stop and photograph something every 10 feet. Being in central Beijing during the holiday was an absolute trip for this desert-dwelling soul of mine. Thousands of people everywhere, and passport checks on every corner. I really felt like I was in a totally different world. We found out though, if you're really patient and wait in the street underpasses, you can eventually get some empty shots. For this trip to Tiananmen Square, I'm shooting on black and white Ilford Pan 400, a film stock that I've never shot before and only bought because I liked the black and pink color of the box. We found out that you have to make a reservation in order to get into Tiananmen Square, so after waiting in line for hours and going through multiple police checkpoints, we were shooed away at the gates. Not to be discouraged, we spent the rest of the remaining light wandering the streets and doing a bit of street photography. Our second attempt at Tiananmen Square was semi-successful, but also a massive failure. This time around we got up at 4am, got there right as it was opening, and we were met with torrential rain. The kind of rain that makes it near impossible to take any photos with a 35 year old camera. To make matters worse, me and my dumb brain completely forgot to back up all the footage from that day. So I lost everything we shot. So yeah. At least there are a few photos from that soggy day. And we did get into Tiananmen Square. Because I wasn't able to shoot much at all in the square, I still had about half the roll of Ilford left in my camera. So out I went again into the busy streets with the aim of doing some street photography. Street photography has always been something that I love to do. It's both incredibly peaceful as well as exhilarating. There's a simple slowness as well as a fast pace, always on your toes kind of nature. You have to be willing to sit in one spot just waiting for the right moment, as well as be able to grab onto those single fleeting moments that pop in and out of reality faster than a hummingbird. I've been really nervous about doing street work here in Beijing because, well, I'm in a foreign country and only know like three words in Chinese. But of the few people that I've kind of semi-spoken to after taking their photo, they have all been incredibly kind and honestly seemed excited that I took their picture. At least, that's what the conversation felt like. I'm not really sure what actual words they said, but you can get a long way with just hand gestures and smiles. 
I'm curious to know what your thoughts on street photography are. I've heard a lot of differing opinions. Some people hate it and think it's an invasion of privacy. Some think it's utterly pointless. And there are those that dedicate their entire photographic career solely to doing street photography. So let me know down in the comments how you feel about it. I've absolutely loved my time in China so far. This country is nothing like what I learned about it in America. I don't know exactly how to describe it other than to say, everything you think you know about it is probably wrong. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of failure and chaos. I'll see you next time here on the Kevy Chronicles.